Uh, Nick Lane has a book called Life Ascending, where he lists the 10 great inventions of evolution, the origin of life being first, and DNA, the hereditary material that encodes the genetic instructions for all living organisms, then photosynthesis, the process that allows organisms to convert sunlight into chemical energy, producing oxygen as a byproduct, the complex cell, eukaryotic cells, which contain a nucleus and organelles arose from simple bacterial cells, sex, sexual reproduction, movement, so just the ability to move under which you have the predation, the predators and ability of living oh, organisms like to find food. I like that movement's in there, that's cool. Yeah, I th but a movement includes a lot of interesting stuff in there, like yeah. predator-prey dynamic, right? which, not to romanticize a nature is metal, that seems like an important <laughs> one. I don't know, it's such a computationally powerful thing to have a predator and prey. Well, it's efficient for things to eat other things that are already alive because they don't have to go all the way back to the base chemistry. Well, that, but maybe I just like deadlines, but it creates an urgency. You're going to get eaten. <laughs> you got to live. Yeah. Like the survival, it's not just the static environment oh, you battle against. You're like, yeah. The, the, the dangers against which you're trying to survive are also evolving. This is just a much faster way to uh, explore the space of possibilities. Uh, I actually think it's a gift that we don't have much time. Yes. Uh, sight, the ability to see. So the increasing complexifying of sensory organisms, consciousness, and death. The concept of programmed cell death. These are all inventions yeah. along the line. I well, like invention as a word for them. I think that's good. Which are the more interesting inventions to you? What origin of life? Because you kind of are not glorifying the origin of life itself. There's a there's a no, process. No, I think the origin of life is a continual process. That's yeah. why I'm interested in the first transition and solving that problem because I think it's the hardest. But I think I think I think it's happening all the time. When you look back at the history of Earth, like what are you impressed happened? I like sight um, as an invention. Because uh, I think having sensory perception and trying to comprehend the world, to use anthropocentric terms, is like a really critical feature of life. And I also, it's interesting the way that sight has complexified over time, right? So like if you think at the origin of life, uh, nothing on the planet could see, mm -hmm. right? So like for a long time, life had no sight. Um, and then, you know, like photon receptors were invented. And then when multicellularity evolved, those cells eventually grew into eyes. And we had the multicellular eye. And then it's interesting when you get to societies, like human societies, that we invent even better technologies of seeing like telescopes and microscopes, uh, which allow us to see deeper into the universe or at smaller scales. Um, so I think I think that's pretty profound the way that sight has transformed the ability of life to literally see uh, the reality in which it's existing in. Um, I think consciousness is also obviously deeply interesting. I've gotten kind of obsessed with like octopus. I don't like I they're just so weird. And the fact that like they evolved complex nervous systems kind of independently is like, seems very alien. Yeah, there's a lot of alien-like organisms. That's another thing I saw in the jungle. Yeah. Just things that are like, oh, okay, they make one of those, huh? It just feels <laughs> like there's- examples? <laughs> there's a frog that's as, as thin as a sheet of paper. Oh, and I was like, God. what? And it gives birth through like pores. Like, oh, I've it? seen videos of that. It's so gross when the babies come out. Yeah. Did you see that? Like, yes. like in person, like the babies oh, coming no, out? Oh, no, no. I but, saw the, uh, oh. without the- Have uh, you seen videos of that? It's yes, so gross. Yes. It's one of the grossest things I've ever seen. <laughs> well, so <laughs> gross is just the other side of beautiful, I think. <laughs> yes. It's like, oh, wow, that yeah. that's, that's possible. I guess if I was one of those frogs, I would think that was the most beautiful event I'd ever seen. <laughs> Although, like, human childbirth is not that beautiful either. Yeah, <laughs> it's all a matter of perspective. <laughs> well, we come into the world so violently. It's just, like, it's amazing. Well, I mean, the world is a violent place. Yeah. So, again, another... <laughs> It's just another side of the coin. You know what? This actually makes me think of one that's not up there, which I do find really incredibly amazing, 
is um, is the process of like the germline cell in you know in organisms like basically like every living thing on this planet at some point in its life has to go through a single cell and this whole issue of like development like the developmental program is kind of crazy like how do you build you out of a single cell how does a single cell know how to do that like you know pattern formation of a multicellular organism obviously like evolves with DNA, but there's a lot of stuff happening there about when cells take on certain morphologies and things that mm-hmm. people don't understand, like the actual shape formation mechanism. And a lot of people study that and it's, um, and there's a lot of advances being made now in that field. I think it's pretty shocking though, that like how little we know about that process. Uh, and often it's left off of people's lists. It's just kind of interesting. Embryogenesis is fascinating. Yeah. Cause it, you start from just one cell. Yeah. And the genes in all the cells are the same, right? So like the differentiation has to be something that's like much more about like the actual like, you know, expression of genes over time and like how they get switched on and off and also the physical environment of like the cell interacting with other cells. And there, there's just a lot of stuff going on. Yeah, the computation, the intelligence of that process yes, might be like the most important thing to understand. And we just kind of don't really think about it. Right. We think about the final product. Yeah. Maybe the the key to understanding the organism is understanding that process, not the final product. Probably, yes. Hmm. I think most of the things about understanding anything about what we are are embedded in time. Well, of course you would say that. I know. So predictable. <laughs> it's turning into a deterministic universe. It always has been. Always was, like the meme. Yeah, always was, but it won't be in the future.